What's up everybody, my name is Chris Reed and today we are continuing our tutorial series A to Z in Reason Studios. In this video, we are checking out the Polystep Sequencer. The Polystep Sequencer is a player inside of Reason 12. Players are MIDI note generators. I'm going to show you guys today how you can use this Polystep Sequencer and how it's going to help you to better generate chords, melodies, and just overall your entire beat. So let's jump inside Reason so we can check out the Polystep Sequencer. All right, I'm here in Reason. Let's take a listen to the beat. Alright, so let's start off by taking a look at the polystep sequencer. In the very middle of the player is where you have your piano roll and you can simply add in notes by double clicking in any space and you can add in a note. And if you want to delete a note, you can of course double click that note and it will delete that note. If you hold control when you go to click in a note, you actually don't have to double click. It'll just draw the notes in. To move a note around, you simply need to grab it by its leftmost part and you can move it around all around this area. It's just like a piano roll, only it's not like a piano roll. And the reason why I say it's not like a piano roll is because there's this key and scale feature that they have implemented inside of the polystep sequencer. Because of this, you can now set your scale or your key to whatever you want it to and then the piano roll will change. And that way, when you put in a note, you know Know that that note is going to be in key so because of that you don't have to try to figure out what it's gonna sound like or if you're in the right note or the right key you, you will know that it's gonna be a note that is within the key that you set and here's the great part about it when you set up a polystep sequencer using your key and scale you can do that for your entire beat and now every pattern that you create if you're creating using the polystep sequencer every time you go to do a chord on a different instrument or a different melody or a bass line, it's all going to be within the same key. So the way that I use the polystep sequencer is I use my start note to change the octave that I'm working in. So right now it's set to B1. If I wanted to go an octave higher, I would go to B2. And if I wanted to go an octave lower, I would go to B0. Or you can also use it as a way to change where your notes start. So for example, right now it's on C sharp four. If I wanted, I could bring that down to C sharp three. And that just changes it basically by the octave. But of course, you can also do your transposing in this way as well and set everything to uh, maybe one semitone up or two semitones up. What's cool about this is that it actually stays in the key that you set your polystep sequencer to be in. So unlike using a piano roll or using the transpose, when you shift your notes up to semitones or seven semitones, you're actually changing the key that those MIDI notes are in. But when you do it with the polystep sequencer, you're staying in the key and you're really just shifting where you're going to start your melody. You can set it to any key that you would like. And of course, you can set it to any scale and that's going to change the way it sounds also. So depending on what you set it to, it's going to change the way your, your, your MIDI notes sound and the way the polystep sequencer plays them. Of course, also what you also have with the polystep sequencer is the ability to change how fast and how slow those notes are being played. So over here in our rate, we can actually speed this drum pattern up or we can slow it down. So as you can see there, you can actually use the steps. And of course, you can actually take out the amount of steps that you have. Of course, it starts with like a 16 step because it is a poly step sequencer. So it's based upon the steps that you set in. So of course, you can have this be eight steps if you want. It will just repeat after the eight steps. I use the polystep sequencer on all of the instruments in this track, including the drums. What's really cool about this 
is you can go to this button that says edit and you can duplicate to all variations. Your variations are over here by this variation wheel on the left. And so when you duplicate them, you will get copies of that pattern on all of these variations. And what you can do is, like I've done here, you can simply hit this alter button and it will just change the patterns that you have. You can change the pattern a lot or you can just change the pattern slightly. It's totally up to you. What's cool about the variation wheel is you can actually have it auto switch or you can decide to switch it on your own. You can actually set your variation to change by the next variation that's in the sequence or you can have it change randomly, which means it will just pick a variation and it'll just randomly play it. You can have it play one, two, three, four, which means it's gonna play one, two, and then it's gonna play three and then four. So not exactly in a cycle, but it's going to bounce back and forth. It's gonna do like a pendulum between one and two and three and four. And then you can have it set to one, 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 two. It's going to play the first variation three times and then the second variation. Now I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually draw in some MIDI notes and manipulate them by creating a hi-hat pattern that has some pitch changes and velocity changes. So many times we create hi-hat patterns with velocity changes and pitch changes using the piano roll, something like this. I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that same thing with the polystep sequencer and why I feel like it could be even easier than using the piano roll. In order to add a player to an instrument in Reason, you simply need to go in your browser window, click on players, find the player that you want, and click and drag it into the top of your instrument. All right, so now that we have some notes drawn in, now I'm gonna show you guys how you can manipulate these notes and create those same velocity changes and pitch changes. So first of all, for velocity, it's very, it's very easy. All you need to do is actually click the MIDI note you want to change and change this to velocity. And then you can adjust the velocity of each of those steps. If you hold control and then drag up and down, you can actually create even ramps between the changes of your velocity. If you wanna reset your velocity, you can just click this button right here where it says reset. Also, you can add random velocity changes by using this button, R and D. It will randomize the velocity for you. So on the note section, we can use repeats in order to create those triplets and 30 second notes that we have in the hi-hat patterns. You can add up to 16 repeats on one single line. You can actually use this ARP feature to actually change that as well. And you can draw how fast or slow you want it to go. Now that we have this pattern, what we can do is hit edit, duplicate to all variations, go to a different variation, hit alter, and then we can alter this hi-hat pattern a couple different times. Now we have a hi-hat pattern that's completely changing every time we play it. So you can easily create variations within your hi-hats. How about chords? Again, we have our scale set to major and our key set to D. So therefore, anytime I go to draw in a scale, it's going to draw in the appropriate scale. Now I'm going to show you guys. I'll go to a different pattern. Here's the pattern that we created for the beat. Now I'll show you guys how we can build another chord. As soon as I click on F2, it builds this chord out for me. I can make the chord longer by dragging this black bar here at the top and dragging it all the way across. I also can take away some of the notes just by going up or down. So I can have two notes playing. 
I can have three notes, four notes, five notes. It's totally up to you how you want them to play. Now, how do we actually do that? We do that by going to our note section and we can change the height here by adjusting the height that adds more notes or takes away notes. And we also can change the form. So right here, the form is set based on what we choose. So right now the form is on form one and all it is doing is placing a note on every third. If we go to form two, then this is a different chord. Again, form three changes the chord. So we could create our own chord progressions simply by using this feature of the form and adding in how many ever notes we want. So if we really don't want uh, that many notes, we can just have this many notes. We can have this many notes. We can have three notes, four notes, five notes, eight notes. We can have as many notes as we want. And the best part about it is it's going to automatically detect and it's going to automatically place in the scale based on the form that you've chosen. So right here we have form four, form three, form two and form one. So what if we actually start changing some of these notes around? It really doesn't matter which way we go because we know it's all going to be in the right scale. We're using the poly step sequencer to create chords. Well, we say, well, chords don't always play in that way. They don't always play on the one. You can actually use this slide indicator to change exactly when it plays. So it doesn't play exactly on the one. So you can add as much slide as you want or not. And we also can change the chords to arpeggio. And it's arpeggio mode right here with off and on. When we turn it on, now these notes are going to arpeggiate. <laughs> The last mode that we can look at for this chord section is strum. So if we turn on strum, we can adjust how much of the strum we want. So we can say we want it to strum a lot. We can change the direction of the strum also. So all of these chords will not just play on the one. The last thing I want to show you about this bottom section is this probability area. So right now it's set that this note will happen 100% of the time. It will always play, but we can actually set it to 50% of the time and then it won't play every single time. It'll only play 50% of the time. So the probability is algorithmic and computer based, but let's see what happens. So with this probability, it shows us that it's going to play, it'll play one time through and then it won't play the next time through a two to two ratio, meaning that it plays once and then it doesn't play. And it pretty much keeps that same pattern every single time. And you can change all of these to happen that way or none of them to happen that way. Some to 100 percent, some to 75 percent. Totally up to you. So up here at the top, we have the sequence and key buttons. I'm going to show you what those two things do right now. So if it's set to sequence, when you hit run, it's going to play our sequence. That's pretty much how we've been using it. So if I want to use my MIDI keyboard and I want to actually play some notes in, then I can play some notes and then I can change them around in the poly step sequencer. So when I hit run and record, I can actually record those notes in. Thank you. 
So if I switch this to key mode and I use my MIDI keyboard, when I play a note on my MIDI keyboard, it's actually going to change the start note and it's going to play the sequencer based on that key. If you play a note that is not in that key, then it won't actually play the wrong note. Instead, what it will do is it'll play the next note that should be within that key. You can have up to eight different patterns with all of these different variations and styles and types of music inside of one polystep sequencer patch that you can then save and load for another instrument or for another time. Just like with all the players in Reason, if you hit this send to track button, it will send the MIDI notes within a certain loop that you designate and it will draw those notes out for you. So in that way, you don't have to continue to use the player once you've created your idea. And once you've got your MIDI note idea done, you can simply hit send to track and it will create those notes for you. The Polystep Sequencer is a really powerful player inside of Reason, allowing you to create chord progressions, melodies, and so much more. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it with somebody else so they can get the information, and subscribe to this channel so that you can see more of our A to Z series coming up in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace.